what's up everyone, Game Dad here, and we are back with part two of my current PSP collection. So let's dive in and see what games are next. Grand Theft Auto Vice City Stories was released by Rockstar Games in 2006, and this one is kind of just a, another adaptation in the overall universe of Grand Theft Auto, specifically in the universe of Vice City. And personally, Vice City was one of my favorite in the Grand Theft Auto franchise, so it was pretty cool to be able to play through an actual like more portable version, a miniature story of another game in this franchise. Grip Shift was released by Sony in 2005, and this game, it feels kind of like Sony's answer to a Hot Wheels racing kind of game. So the cars look kind of, you know, over the top, futuristic or cartoony, and the tracks kind of match that same aesthetic. But overall, I mean, it's still a lot of fun. I still had a lot of fun playing through this game. They had a cool training mode so you can learn the different stunts and basic maneuverability of the game. And as you can see here, I mean, I'm just going through just the steering uh, tutorial, but overall, I wasn't very good at it. As you can see, I continuously fell off all the time. Innocent Life, a futuristic harvest moon was released by Marvelous in 2007, and the title says it all. I mean, it really is just a harvest moon game with a futuristic skin on it. I actually had a lot of fun playing this game. I picked this up sometime in 2018. I don't remember exactly what month. It was when one of my previous pickup videos. But overall, I mean, the game, it's really fun. It's got kind of a quirky graphical style to it, and I just had a blast playing through it. Invisimals was released by SCEE in 2010, and this is one of those games where the entire thing was just one gigantic gimmick. This was all to sell the PlayStation camera that came out for the PSP. And, I mean, it's kind of cool. It's kind of like augmented reality on a 3DS, like using those different kind of cards and stuff, but it's on a PSP but it's very gimmicky. I mean, you can capture some monsters, kind of raise them up a little bit, but overall, it's just kind of meh. Iron Man was released by Sega in 2008, and this is basically a video game adaptation of the Iron Man movie that came out. So this was the one that, you know, launched essentially the entire MCU, the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe, and you're just playing through the whole plot of the movie, the likeness isn't really that of Robert Downey Jr. As you can see, they kind of went as far as they could without what seems like having an official likeness of him. But overall, you play through the game, and that gets you through the story of the movie. I mean, pretty good graphics. You know, it's pretty cool having it on a handheld. Up next, we have Jack and Daxter, The Lost Frontier, released by SCEA in 2009. And this is an awesome Jack and Daxter game. You go through... You're playing through the storyline, you're just having a blast, chilling with the characters that you know and love from other Jack and Daxter games, and you get all the same quirky humor that you expect, you get the same solid gameplay, and the game overall is just a blast. I mean, I, I love being able to have a Jack and Daxter game on the go. It's great. I would love to see a, a, an even more modern version of one. Now, here we have Jet Dego Pocket Let's Go by Airliner, released by Taito in 2005. And the reason that is such a weird, complicated name is because this is actually an import title for the PSP. And from what I can tell, it was kind of hard to get through like menus and stuff, is it's essentially a like as realistic as you can get flight sim on PSP. I mean, it was kind of cool. They have a bunch of different like Japanese airlines and stuff like that. I mean, I don't, I'm not super huge into flight sim games, but I mean, it's kind of cool to see it on a PSP. Up next, we have Killzone Liberation, released by SCEA in 2006, and this game is just another awesome entry in the Killzone franchise. You're going through with the same classic gameplay that you would expect and that you've come to know and love from other Killzone games. This one, I gotta say, the graphics are really nice on this game, and I really enjoyed being able to play through it. Again, it's awesome having another game like this on Portable, and it's just great to be able to play another entry in the franchise. And here we have Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, released by Square Enix in 2010. Kind of a late release for the PSP. But this is another one of those Kingdom Heart titles that, it, God, it feels like there's a million of these outside of the main three games. But it goes through and tells you different parts of the story. 
got to be honest, I did not go through a ton of this game. I just am not that into the Kingdom Hearts franchise that I have to go through and play every one of these stinking games that came out. But I've heard very good things about this, and graphically, it's very aesthetically pleasing. And up next, we have Lego Batman the Video Game, released by Warner Bros. Interactive Entertainment in 2008. And this is exactly what you would expect. I believe I have this on the PS3, maybe the PS2, and it's the same game, just portable. I mean, graphically, it essentially looks the same because I don't think it really is that intense of a game graphically. They just kind of give it that uh, comical look and feel to it. And you just play through an awesome Lego game going through with all your favorite villains and baddies in there. And you're just having a blast rocking it as Batman and Robin. And up next, we have Little Big Planet, released by SCEE in 2009. And I just love the Little Big Planet franchise. I mean, it was such a just off the wall kind of IP that they came up with whenever they were launching the PS3. It's an awesome entry on PSP. I'm pretty sure it's just the exact same game, the original one. Uh, and I don't think they released Little Big Planet 2 on this, but I loved Little Big Planet 2. I have Little Big Planet 3 on PS4, and it's just awesome to take Sackboy on the go and have a blast. Up next is Lumens, or Luminous, released by Ubisoft in 2005. Not really sure how to pronounce that one. And honestly, not really sure how to play the game. It, I was kind of just winging it. I couldn't really figure it out. I didn't dive too deep into like training or instructions or anything. It feels kind of like a Tetris game meets Lights Out, but it's scrolling across horizontally. I don't know. This game is kind of weird, but I mean... It, it seems simplistic enough. I, I'm probably just not very good at it, and that's why I couldn't figure it out. Now, here we have Mega Man Maverick Hunter X, released by Capcom in 2006. And this game just continues the Maverick Hunter line. So you're going through, you're playing what feels like a much more animated kind of game, but it's still the typical Mega Man kind of formula that you would expect. You fight some robots, you go through the story, you fight big bads, and you just go from there. Overall, I mean, pretty cool game. And here is Metal Gear Acid 2, released by Konami in 2006. And in this game, I didn't really know much about it, but it doesn't play at all like any other Metal Gear game I've ever played. This is, for this video, was the first time I ever actually played this game. And it feels very, like... XCOM-esque, so very like turn-based strategy, you know, you can see here you are connected to a grid and you got to stay in that grid, you do your different things, so it feels like it has the sneakiness of a Metal Gear game, but more of an RTS kind of feel. And last up for this video, we have Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, released by Konami in 2010. And fun fact about this game is this is the PSP I was actually playing on, was the special edition one that came with this game. So pretty cool to have a copy of this and have the PSP that it goes with. Um, but another solid Metal Gear Solid game, you know, no pun intended there, but really great. I mean, I had a fantastic time playing through and enjoyed almost every minute of it i mean it gets a little tedious at times just like any metal gear game but overall i really enjoyed it so there you have it everyone that is everything that is currently in part two of my psp collection now please let me know down in the comments below what you thought of today's video and while you're down there please also be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons as well as that little notification bell so you get an alert every time i got a new video coming out now as always i'm game dad i thank you guys for watching and i'll catch you later